will now be recorded. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this regular meeting of the Vader City Council. It is 6.03 p.m. on February 9th, 2023. Roll call. Present. Here. Jason Bailey. Jason did ask to be excused for work reasons. Andrew Hall. Here. Mike Parsons. Here. Michael Ferguson. Present. Excellent. We have a quorum. Pledge of Allegiance. Parsons, would you go on? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Mayor's report reminder that the planning committee does still have vacancies. Um, interested candidates should inquire at City Hall or contact the mayor. Um, Again, you don't have to live in the city limits as long as you live within three miles of the city. You can be on planning and parks board for our code. <clears throat> city payroll, um, as uh, directed by the council last year, uh, we have finally moved over to ADP for payroll services. So we're now outsourcing um, a majority of our payroll services, which will save our clerks more time than it will cost us for ADP to do the work. So that's all great news. Uh, the Megan collections. So um, there were some issues this week, I believe last week as well, on uh, the on C Street north of Sixth, where um, the uh, driver was not willing to back down the narrow street to collect the residents' garbage, and so they were asking them to bring all their trashes out to Sixth Street. Um, if you are aware of the people that live on North North. C Street, um, they're elderly and they have medical issues and they're not capable of doing that. So um, initially they had asked the city to get involved and then apparently um, Reggie and Linda Smith got involved at some point and seems to have convinced LeMay to uh, start coming down their, their street. So um, we'll we keep following up on that and thank our citizens for being so direct with our garbage collector. Uh, clerk training. So all the clerks um, this this week were trained by our city attorney on various code enforcement procedures. Uh, as you know, we've got uh, lots of new faces at City Hall, and uh, it's always good for a refresher on code enforcement to keep the city uh, safe legally and uh, to uh, help do as much stuff in house as we can to save money. Council reports. Any members of the council have anything to report? No. Uh, agenda approval. There are two changes to the agenda. First, the voucher total is slightly different. Um, so we need to approve the agenda with the changes in voucher total. Um, also, I would like to add on council uh, city business item number three, council con to consider real estate purchase and sale agreement. I'll make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes for agenda agenda for February 9th, 2023, with the change in the voucher and the addition of the purchase and sales agreement. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the agenda with the noted changes. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Ferguson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. <laughs> I opposed or I in favor? I in favor. Unanimous. Motion carries. Minutes approval. Make a motion that we approve the City Council meeting, meeting minutes for January 26, 2023. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the meeting minutes from January 26. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Ms. McIntosh. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Voucher approval. I'll make a motion that we approve the beginning of February vouchers of 2023 at $57,377.94. That was a one. <clears throat> Okay, $51,377.94. Second. 
We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the vouchers. We have a second from Mr. Ferguson. Discussion? No. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Special reports, Lewis County Sheriff's Department, monthly report. Thank you, Mr. Fraze. Good evening. Good evening. The January law enforcement totals for the month of January, there were a total of 311 citizen contacts, uh, 10 service calls, one of which was when a deputy was dedicated to the city of Bader, 29 traffic stops resulting in six infractions and one criminal citation for suspended, uh, one felony arrest um, for a felony level assault, and a three uh, misdemeanor warrants. Wow. The felony arrest was in the city limits? Felony arrest was in the city limits. It had to do with a juvenile that was highly intoxicated, assaulting a fire person. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, and did they did they go? Were they incarcerated or? The the can't mention the name, but the juvenile yeah, yeah, yeah. was taken to the hospital. And, yeah. Okay. The only reason I ask is I know that everybody always talks about. The cost of the sheriff's department is getting our own, and every time somebody goes into jail, it costs. It would cost us a ton of money. Everything so, is covered. Yeah, everything's covered now with with that. So I just wanted to make a point that way. In this particular case, again, she went to the hospital, not to jail. Oh, okay. Sorry, your person. <laughs> That's also health expenses is also relevant because. Uh, Local government could be on the hook for certain medical expenses, um, which again are covered by our contract with the sheriff's right. department. Yes, because the person was in custody. Yes, we get the bill. <laughs> if, if, the, if the patient doesn't pay it, the county does. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Can we go into your website to see what is within your jurisdiction to help us, or whether it's a civil issue and you don't come out? I don't know the definition of yeah there's there's no way you can go on the, a website because there's so many different um, variables, variables that, that, that come into effect so unfortunately if, well, if you think that something may be criminal or there may be something in law enforcement could you call and we'll ask you all sorts of questions and make that determination based on is there something we can do is there a, a law violation or is it something that has to be settled through the courts and they have to make that decision and you guys are happy to do that, right? Yeah. Like answer the phone and <laughs> make that determination. So Protect and serve. Yeah, they're good at it. He does it with a smile, too. Questions? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next us report, Lewis County PUD broadband update. Mr. Painter here is here, and I'm sorry, I forget your name, sir. Mr. Jeff Bain. Jeff Bain. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Mm -hmm. He would have blinded our clerk with the projector if I put it up on the wall. <laughs> I like this. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. Yes. So excited. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for the time and the opportunity to provide the Bayer City Council and members of the Bader community with an update on the PUD's fiber uh, project. Uh, a little bit of background, and this would be turning to the second page in the packet that we have before you. Um, right at, at late 2019, very early 2020, kind of when the pandemic hit, uh, we realized that um, despite knowing all along that internet was an issue throughout Lewis, much of Lewis County, um, the pandemic really shone a spotlight on the, on the nature of the problem and the scope and severity of the problem. And it just so happened that, that right along that same time, legislators at the state and federal level took note that broadband, lack of broadband connectivity was a severe issue in rural America. And so the pandemic shone the spotlight and then uh, state and feds basically created a bunch of different appropriations and funding opportunities. So the PUD realizing that these funding opportunities, these kind of once in a lifetime funding opportunities really, were uh, really at, at our doorstep, 
we decided to really take a hard look at what it would take to design internet infrastructure, broadband internet infrastructure throughout the, the entire PUD service area. And we broke out uh, the, the PUD service territory into 17 service zones, one of which you'll see there to the south, number eight, is the Vader service zone. And Vader, just because of the nature of unserved, uh, broadband unserved numbers here in the community, rose to the top of the list as an area of high need for broadband. And so we were able to early on apply for money to the State Public Works Board for the Vader community, and we're successful. We received in uh, late 2021, early 2022, uh, an award announcement of $4.7 million for the Vader community uh, to basically build fiber to the home infrastructure. So that's everything backbone, middle mile, and fiber to the home throughout the Vader community for a total of 1,135 passes. Uh, and so this uh, funding uh, is basically how it works, is it will allow for grant funds to pay for the first 40% of those 1,135 customers uh, as an early adopter incentive. But the great thing is, is all of that backbone and that middle mile infrastructure, which is some of the most expensive of a broadband construction project, will be fully funded by the grant. And so uh, we are currently in the permitting uh, engineering design phase, uh, and we will begin construction likely a little bit later this year with a completion of October 2026. So we'll get into maybe a little more details and, and open it up for questions specifically about the Vader community and what the plan is. But we also thought it might be helpful just to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, why we're doing fiber and why we're choosing to operate what's called an open access network. So we'll define that in a second. Uh, but before I hand it over to Mr. Bain, I'll just make mention, just as a matter of context, that the PUD is, has received grant awards for other communities throughout our service territory. So Vader isn't the only community that we're building in. There are several others where we're building concurrently. So lots of construction going on, which is good for local jobs, uh, local economy, uh, but it also means that uh, we're uh, juggling lots of different projects at the same time. We're up to the task, but I uh, just want you to have that general context that we're in multiple communities working on broadband. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Ben. Yeah, I did. Willie really explained a lot of great things, but we brought a couple of examples of the fiber that really is going to be in your neighborhood and take a look at it. Kind of explain why why fiber, right? Um, if you look at this one right here, so this is this is like I thought for us. There's 288 fibers in this one little table. So this is going to be your backbone as, as you get to, into your your homes, your subdivisions, and everything else. So um, definitely pass it around, take a look at it. Uh, the fiber itself, you'll notice, is just a little tiny, tiny, tiny things in there. So, so, but really, why fiber? It's fast to speed. So, really, the limitation on fiber is the electronics that's actually lighting the fiber. So, uh, at, as, as current technology comes out and speeds increase, we're going to be able to increase those speeds uh, depending on the electronics. Um, and we all know how satellite or even cell phones or whatnot, you you really, your speeds come and go um, as saturation, you get more people on the network, uh, speeds start to go down. We don't have this with a fiber optic network. It's durable. Um, that fiber right there has a stainless steel lining inside uh, underneath the black coating uh, as an armor. So it's not, it's not going to be bulletproof. It, it, it can be damaged, but uh, it, it's very, very strong. <laughs> Uh, symmetrical speed. So when we talk about oh, speeds of fiber, it's really important that if you're getting, you know, 150 megabits down, you need 150 megabits up to really get that symmetrical connection. So a lot of your Starlink and whatnot can, can say, we can give you great speeds down, but getting it back up. So when we talk about that, it's like your communications that, uh, uh, you know, your video conferences, getting, getting things like that. So it's very important that that symmetrical is there really helps out coming down and going up. 
Uh, we're here in a right? We're all, we're all talking about uh, being green, and uh, it, it's, it saves a significant amount of energy compared to the old copper that we have. Um, it takes a lot less to light it up and go to use the source things. Lower uh, latency and attenuation, so it, it means that your your information is going to make it there. Like when you're when you're on your your conferences, you start to get some chatter or some some where it starts to buffer and it starts to you know you can't hear and you're talking. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, really, it, it drops that down so you don't get it. It makes your experience better. You know and and. Another important thing is unlimited data. So how much data do you you know you consume? Watch all the movies you want. You don't cross it will well, not be throttled back. Like a lot of other times where you use 16 gig per, per month, you're gonna be throttled back, and now you're down to that one day connection again. So why So none of that. Hmm. Yeah, and to, just to give you a, a sense of connectivity, when we did an internet speed test in early 2020 that gave us the data for to apply for these grant dollars, yeah, mo most, of, most of the people in Bayer only had 10 megabits download and, and right around one megabit upload. Pretty slow speeds, generally speaking. This fiber will give residential customers the ability uh, to access 150 download and 150 upload. So significantly, multiples faster. So it really is, in terms of technology out there, it's, it, it is right at the, you know, the leading edge of some of the best technology that, that's generally available in terms of what we call terrestrial or land-based internet, okay? Uh, why open access? So there's this term that you may have heard out and about, open access network. And so unlike traditionally when you have a local internet service provider or telecom company come in and offer internet, they've already strung their own copper or whatever infrastructure and they are basically selling service to you as a customer on their privately held exclusive network which has worked for lots of rural communities for a long time, uh, but uh, there's also a number of communities throughout uh, the U.S. Uh, that are really creating what are, what are called open access networks, and that's where public agencies like the community are securing grant dollars. We're building this infrastructure that is gonna be publicly owned for a long period of time, and then we're going to offer to both different internet service providers the ability to use this infrastructure to offer customers access to service at various speeds at various price points. And what that means then is through an open access network, you'll have not just a single internet service provider to choose from, you'll have a marketplace of multiple different internet service providers to choose from and free market, they will be competing for your business. So usually with open access networks, open, what that means is if they're competing, it's lower prices, usually they're more competitive and better customer service and responsiveness and things of that nature. So we think, and, we, and we've been working closely with other areas and other PUDs that have had open access networks recently, it's a good model because it gives customers more choices and better service at better prices. And so that, that's why we've gone with what's called open access. And what you'll see on this slide where it says why open access is a screenshot from one of the nearby PUDs, Mason PUD3 up north. Uh, and that is a screenshot of just some of the different uh, internet service providers that customers up there are able to choose from. And then if you, and I'm just gonna take this next slide down. Okay. When, let's say you were to click on that first option, advanced screen, you'll see for that, for that internet service provider, you have a couple different options. You could go one gigabit, or you could do 100 megabit, um, excuse me, one gigabit or 100 megabit, uh, and you'll see the different price points there. So 64.95 a month or 59.95 a month. And that just kind of gives you a midpoint. So advanced stream isn't necessarily the cheapest, nor are they the most expensive, but that gives you a general sense of what kind of retail pricing 
residential customers in the bigger community than what they expect. Definitely, we're going out and, and, and meeting with a lot of these fiber providers, internet providers, and making sure that they want to be on our network and, and give you that freedom. Uh, Toledo Telephone stepped up and said, you know, they'll, they'll be on our network, they'll be one of your options. So it's really good that we have these local partnerships to make sure that uh, everybody gets served. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the your project. So like Willie said before, we had 1,135 passings or homes that we can actually connect to uh, like that. The grant itself was $4.7 million two years ago. So we're probably gonna have some cost overruns and, and whatnot. We're, we're looking on how we can you know, get more money for those and uh, continue to do the good work we do. Like you said, the, the status we're doing right now is permitting work. Uh, I'm working a lot with uh, uh, the Parks Department. Um, we've actually had contractors go out and look at all the poles to, to look at the heights of the conductor, make sure our poles are good, are high enough, and, and that we're covered so when we go out and do the work, we're ready to go. And like Willie said, the uh, completion is slated for October of 2026. So what does that mean? The completion is when the project needs to be completed for funds to be awarded. But as we get into your neighborhoods and areas, and we have uh, the facility built, we're going to start lining people up and providing service if they sign up, you know, as soon as we can. So before 2026. Yeah, and we don't have the exact timeline quite yet because we need to get a little more clear on exactly what the construction timeline looks like. But as Mr. Bain just said, uh, well before the, the project completion date, we will reach out to customers on a case-by-case -case basis as we build fiber in front of your home and say, all right, there's fiber in front of your home and we have the electronics in place that can support service to you at this time. Do you want to sign up? And then that goes back to that 40% of where the grant pays for the first 40% of customers to have fiber installed from the road to their house, essentially. And that was all really designed by the Public Works Board as an early adopter incentive. And so it, it is to the advantage of folks who are interested in this high-speed internet that they would want to be part of that first 40% early adopters group because, and the PUD has yet to figure out the details, but just like our power service, if there's a new customer who builds a new house, they have to pay what's called a line extension to have power run from wherever we currently have power, basically it's alongside the road, to their house. Well, there will be a similar related fee for line extension for fiber for those that aren't part of this 40% rate of And so there really is an incentive for folks who want internet to be among the, the first to sign up for service. And again, it's it's going to take a while for us to figure out all of the details of what you know that line extension fee is for those beyond the 40%. Uh, we have to do what's called a cost of service analysis, which is a lot of deep math that is way over my head on really analyzing how much it costs to, to, to get all of that done. Uh, but the rest assured, the PUD is a cost-based utility. Because we are nonprofit, it's not like we're making profit on any of this, neither the service or the, the infrastructure itself. So whatever it costs to make that line extension, that cost simply gets passed on um, on a proportional basis. So with that, uh, I'll just conclude by showing you the, the, the uh, second to last slide. And apologies, it doesn't have road markers, but you know, I, I feel like we can pretty well identify the community based upon the map as it is. Uh, you'll see the general route uh, that we have designed at this point. And you'll see that there are some little purple and green boxes. Those are cabinets uh, for electronics primarily, or splitter points, where we take this fiber and we basically split it off into a couple or more different directions. The, the uh, let's see, the, the blue lines are where the fiber will be run overhead using our existing power pole. 
infrastructure. So where the power lines hang from the power poles, telecom infrastructure hangs below the power lines. So it'll be overhead or aerial, as they call it. And then you'll see there are a few areas where there are red lines. And those are areas where we will have to bury the, uh, the fiber underground. Uh, underground is considerably more expensive, and so we're also able to get this project done within close to the project budget that we looked at because we're able to utilize the utilities existing network of power lines. So that's been a lot of talking, apologies, but we wanted to make sure we've provided that general information, and so now happy to entertain any questions that folks have. So the overhead question. So <clears throat> going into communities where DOD is already underground, obviously you're going to run the fiber optic underground as well. Yep. Okay. If we don't have existing aerial facility, yeah, that's the plan. Oh. Underground. Yep. Gotcha. And what what could we expect as far as um, during the construction? Like, how long do you think it, you would be in Vader? And are there going to be like trucks everywhere? And like definitely. There, there, so there's a two-year, what, three-year build? Almost a three-year build. Yeah. So two years actively out in the field. Right? So, yeah. yeah. But you yeah. you you have uh, you know facilities all the way from I-5 all the way out to Riderwood. So it's it's a large project, and you will see uh, a lot of trucks around. They will have our placards on them, um, so they will be representative of us. Um, but at a, at a future meeting, we can come back and, and actually have that build out schedule. Um, Will PUD be performing the construction or? No, it's all going to be uh, uh, bid out. Okay. So, yeah. There might be some make ready work, like putting in a larger pole uh, where we need more clearance or whatnot that the PUD will do. The majority of the work will be by outside project. And that, that comes down to engineering and stuff like that. Like yeah, like yeah. Running a span. Like exactly. Yeah. So the uh, the eleven hundred and thirty five. That forty percent. So it's forty percent of that number. Right. So four hundred and fifty. The first four hundred and fifty four homes. They will not have to pay okay. for the fiber to go from there from the road to their house. And then not to be snarky at all, but. Is this faded? Yes. This one is? <clears throat> Where's the railroad? What are you not looking at? I don't see it. Like we're missing the, the, the railroad. We're missing the. Uh, yeah, page seven is in there. Yep. Yep. There's I 5, there's the Walls Pond. Oh, town there's town I five. center is basically center, <laughs> center of the bottom. It, it's just so blown out. Yeah. Of it. Apologies. And, and it's oh, I see the railroad right now. Yeah, it's helpful. We can pick and put some road markers and, and provide a copy. How about glasses? Do you have those? <laughs> I need some too. Yeah. <laughs> it's this is big on the map. Okay. I'm all from Oklahoma. I guess I learned more in this one, John. It's that's it is. Because you think about telephone poles and wires. This is Amber. This is Amber right here. Yeah. And this is the road. Yeah. So you'll let us this know in advance where these things go. I'm worried about ice storms. Don't have to wait a few hours. You know, steam will come down the mountain. No new poles will be required. We're we're going to string the fiber along the existing poles. That we have electric infrastructure and the poles that are out there are more than well rated to handle okay. the weight of the we have sufficient poles already existing to compensate all the people who say i want it yeah yes if you want it you don't have a pole like it has a house you get everybody with this yeah all the all yeah. the all, yeah. the, all, yeah. the, all yeah. the all the blue line is yeah. is overhead so the vast majority of the bills in this community will be overhead Using the existing power lines. There's there, there's only one line on there where you can actually see the strands on the inside of it. Yeah. Um, you can pull one of these out. But I was like, I was looking at it first, I was like, oh, it's copper. But yeah, you pull uh, yeah. that out, there's like a whole plethora of. Tube. So in each tube, the way it's designed, it, each tube will handle 32 homes. 
and there's 280. Exactly. Two. That's amazing technology. You can't actually go up to 128 homes and other things, but we're, we're designing it, you know, to really be future proof so we can, you know, change and, things as they need to happen. Just something that we need to notify PUD that we want to do one of those 450? Yes, but not yet. We are working. It's too on late. I already <laughs> texted them. <laughs> yeah, we, we're working. We're working, we're working yeah. on that marketplace that, that I showed you, that example from Mason Curry, that is what we're working right now to set up in the background. And then as fiber gets built in front of a home, and we know that you are able to get sign up for service, then we will reach out to you directly and say, we have fiber in front of your home, would you like to sign up? And if so, visit the online marketplace. I don't need to know if that's QD from the online. No, no there, there's nothing quite like that. But we will notify you as it becomes available. And then you have the ability to sign up. Now, for those that may not have like internet service currently at home, uh, we will have kiosks also set up. And I realize it's a bit of a drive, but at our Shehalis office, where we have our customer service lobby, uh, we may, um, although we haven't really talked about this, so I'm probably going to put my foot in my mouth. We could probably put a kiosk uh, somewhere here such as City Hall or wherever it might make sense, but where we get internet connection so that folks can come in just local and, and sign up as they may need to. But uh, we'll have to figure out the, the logistics and details as we get a little further along. Sounds like just, so that sounds like an expensive thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, so actually, actually, Jeff has a realtor friend, and he asked this question a couple weeks ago. And what your realtor friend said? He said it's not official, but usually about ten thousand dollars before it gets the deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. So. Well, just to just to throw it out there, um, we did a fiber to the home project in um, St. George, I think it was St. George, Utah, yeah, sure. and we downloaded. The whole Star Trek trilogy in two minutes. Yeah, it was nuts. It was. Wow. I don't remember the yeah. exact the exact um, a little bit of information here, but it's something like with fiber you can transmit the entire mm -hmm. contents of the Library of Con Con mm -hmm. Congress from the East Coast to the West Coast in three seconds. Yeah. Wow. It's incredible. The the fiber, when when Jeff said earlier that it's a durable technology, yeah, we're not trying to poo poo like the satellite, Starlink and satellite stuff. Those work for, for a lot of folks, but fiber has the durability and the speed so that it can scale up to meet any community's uh, future needs, especially you know, in addition to whatever they might need today. And so it really is a tremendous technology. It's expensive. But we also got outside grant money to build it. And when we did that, it was 18 years ago. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, we started about 20, 23 years ago, back in 2000, with the uh, uh, James Gould and all the demo calls. And it just kind of built out from there. I can get internet come to my home for only 30 bucks through my cell phone carrier, but it wouldn't be anywhere near the quality of this right. at high speed. Uh, and when I was thinking about the thing is about a year ago, she told me she was coming down the pipe. And I, not tech savvy, I thought she was saying, well, once it's on board, yes, you have to go through us to sign up for internet. Like, like I don't have to go to one of these five people, I can go directly to TV. And then she'll just pack that on my electric bill to the internet truck. Yeah, so the open access network, you will actually receive the service through one of these providers. However, uh, is it true that at this point you'll likely still get billed? I, I don't actually know the answer to that. Do, will they get the rocket bill as part of their PD bill, or is it going to be a separate? Uh, I was trying to so model like Mason 3 and whatnot, I have it's a separate bill coming from. Your uh, advanced stream, your i five or hood canal, whoever it is. Um, yeah, that allows us to continue to search out grant funds, continue our build to make sure our whole county um, gets internet and allows the internet providers to really do what they do best. Yeah, you're interested in this. Interesting. 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 Interes
If they can join, they can join, right? Open access will allow anybody on. Um, yeah, yeah. There, there are a number of telecommunication companies for whatever reason they they chosen not to participate on open access networks like this. But we do know that there are several internet service providers out there that are willing to be on this network. Well, I'm excited about all this. I wish we could do it right tomorrow, but yeah, we have to get permitting. And it took us a year just to get the contract. Yeah, so there's it's it's crazy. Now the real work begins where we have to manage it and get the bills out. Uh, yeah, a lot of work on both. Before going to six, you'll notify us what the process is and how it's going to work. Yeah, we'll have a meeting with the board. Yes. 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 We would like to provide uh, routine updates to the city council at whatever interval that makes sense. I don't know if that's every three months or every six months, but maybe we can work with Mayor Shy on what makes the most sense for uh, providing those periodic updates as we move along in this project. Sure. Yeah, especially when there's significant advancements or timelines associated with that. Folks love that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, the one thing though that you can't expect is that October of 2026, that is a hard deadline from the grant funder. So don't expect that date to move out much, if at all, because we have to get complete by the end of 2026. Otherwise, we lose out on the grant. Yep. So so okay. so our our feet is on the, to the fire that we have to meet that deadline. So. So I, you know, I know that doesn't give you a lot of detail, but at least it gives you a kind of hard end date. Yeah, we can't let you know that um, this summer we are we're getting everything ready to go out to bid. So by the fall winter is when we're going to really be set up to to look at getting those bills set up. So. Yeah. So there could be a lot more than five companies to do some. Could very good Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank gentlemen for coming down. I think years ago, I have uh, some input. All right, Bob, go ahead. A, a few years ago, a few years ago, we had somebody come through and put cable up. I think they had to get a permit for a pole. And they use the same infrastructure for future, like these guys are doing. So somebody might look into that. There might already be some lines there. I don't know if they're fiber, but I assume they are. It's it's not been ten years ago that they did it. Thanks. Fiber running down. Fiber. Yeah, I remember. I remember that they came into the city. They needed. Um, they needed some uh, permits to uh, move through our right of ways. Um, I think it was when they were installing the new cell phone tower out on the Muckbader Road. I think they ran uh, fiber from I-5 mm -hmm. out to the cell phone tower for its connection. So Does I think that's what it was related to. to. This system. So I don't think they've offered the service to residential business customers, right? They have not. I think I also remember at the time they said something about offering a service um, to residents in City Hall. Um, and it, they never have. Well, we have a design to get it to everyone. Sure. Yeah. Yep. We like your promise better than <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to city business item number one council to consider ordinance 2023 01, the compost procurement. I make a motion that we approve ordinance 2023 01. A motion from Mr. Parsons to approve ordinance 2023 01. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by mm -hmm. Mr. Hall. I had a lot of things I could say. <laughs> Cut me off. <laughs> so I don't have to say them. Oh, that's all right. It, it is discussion time. It is discussion time. Yeah. <laughs> Discuss it. I don't want to ruin a good thing. <laughs> We're on a roll here. <laughs> um, I did attend a solid waste utility meeting um, this week, and they did have representatives from the Department of Ecology on there. In fact, the head of the organization or
or the head of the department that's going to handle this uh, new compost procurement system um, gave a presentation about it. Um, this really is kind of a part one of a two-part um, effort by the state, which is probably not exciting to everybody, but um, the first part is to get this system in place where um, compost has a place to go, which obviously there already is here with LeMay, um, but then also getting getting municipalities and corporations to use the compost. And once this system is in place, um, the state wants to enact um, a collection service requirement for um, household food wastes. And so those food wastes can get collected, diverted from the landfills, and move to that compost. And so we need to have a system, a, a healthy system in place to use all this compost before we start adding more to it. And so that's what that's what this is. This is step one. Is all that paperwork and the management and the reporting is that? Yeah, as far as your plate. Or? Yeah, as far as this, there is a few a few, a few things that that the, right. the city hall needs to do. Yeah. Um, there's a report. That we need to do occasionally that talks about our um, posting use and our efforts. I mean, look, we didn't we didn't do any projects that could have benefited from compost. We can just say we didn't do any projects. We didn't use any compost. So, yeah. You know, it's it's not a it's just a little bit of paperwork, which City Hall spe specializes in, right, Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> you could, yeah. So you could use it. I mean, I'm, I'm no composting expert, but you could use it for all, all kinds of things. You know, I mean, we could use it in the parks. Um, we could use it for, I don't know, we might use it for different landscaping things. When they list uh, the erosion uh, control, yeah. uh, moisture, you know, things like oh, retention. Yeah, it's. I think it's already available to you if you go up to the landfill to get it. Um, you could check with the Lewis County landfill. Yeah, so we can go up and we can get it back after they've ran it through their processes for free okay. as, as they resonate. It's good. Like the, whole, the whole thing is just to divert as much waste from the landfill to other beneficial uses. It's not a bad thing. So. All right, that's what I had to say. Thank you. So You're we, welcome. No, so we get it from LeMay, we don't. Put it on site here. Lomay collects it, no, collects it and takes it to um, a site with Lewis County solid waste. Okay. Exactly. Not, it if does not it, stay here in okay, So if we need it, then we exactly. okay. Yep, okay. we could go up there and get it. <laughs> so, any other discussion? All those in favor of Ordinance 23-01 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. It's highly, highly contested ordinance, I know. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> All right, council to consider, to discuss vacated F Street, um, south of 10th Street, um, and give staff directions on how to proceed. So, um, the history of F Street, F Street south of 10th, um, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, the residents of, of the of that area back in back then um, petitioned the city to vacate that street so it would be no longer a city street that way the residents could better maintain it themselves um, the city agreed we have a variety of documents that talk about the uh, talk about that all the signatures involved and the um, city right-of-way was uh, vacated and now if you look at the uh, maps you can see all the properties um, about each other and there is no city street down the middle. There is a private driveway that currently exists. Uh, the city is not allowed to use public funds to maintain this private driveway. And so it's on the residents to maintain it. Um, there's been, in recent times, there's been a variety of issues that have stemmed um, from F Street no longer belonging to the city, um, from a gate on the south end um, that someone installed so it's no longer a, a through street um, they blocked <coughs> off their property and uh, it's allowed um, there's been issues recently with folks 
parking on the private driveway, um, blocking emergency ingress and egress, and not just emergency, but any. Um, and law enforcement is un, unable to um, provide any assistance um, outside of stern talking to, um, it is a civil matter, so the courts would need to get involved to clear vehicles from those roads. Um, the city has no authority there. Um, so as you see, there's, there's a variety of, of issues with that. Um, through, we, we get uh, quite a few um, official complaints from residents back there about these issues. Um, and um, unofficially, they, some of them have been talked to and they would be in favor of the city making efforts to reinstate F Street as an official street. Um, and so my question for council is, uh, should we reach out to the residents and get a kind of a, a, uh, a feel for it? And uh, if there's a majority, um, I can reach out to the attorney as well as our engineer about the steps and the amount of money it would take for the city to go about um, reinstating the street. Obviously, there would have to be a survey, property lines would have to be adjusted all the way along. Every single person that lived on that street would have their property lines adjusted, the right of way would be put in place. So it would be a big endeavor. What is I, know I, think the, a lot of junk I think the survey, um, there's <laughs> markers on both sides already where F Street should go. Not, well, I know that, um, the first half is marked out on it. Yeah. So, what's I don't, I don't know near here, but back here. Sure. I grew up here. I met my wife right there. On F Street? She lived just on the other side of it, on the, the D, E Street. <clears throat> e, F, yeah, E down, where they just dismantled the trailer. Yeah. And they got all that. She lived in that house when you're 12. Yeah, and, I saw uh, a lot of jets on the yeah, So that, that was always a road. So at some point, I'm like, I'm reeling this all in. So at some point, the city was like, hey, you guys live down there. You take care of it. You can have that. Yes. And so then it became their property. Yeah. Like, just like, here you go. And so now for us to have that B part of our city, we have like city property down there. Like, for residents have access to from both sides, emergency vehicles, it's two dead end roads with no turnaround. Right. No cul de sac, no. Right. What genius idea was that? But I was, I was in you high school. You weren't here either. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that if, I mean, at some point, like if we're doing things for the betterment of our community, we're going to have to open those streets up. I mean, just like, our street you know 10th street that it's at some point i gotta give up some of my yard back to it's you know, it's city to property i mean the water line comes through there all that stuff's gonna be replaced mm -hmm. there's a bunch of houses gonna get built up there i mean it's well, gonna the other the other issue it's, with that street is the sewer pipes because there is no sewer well the sewer is i believe on e street Sewer does those aren't does, that they it goes it. down F Street, but it from from it down rumor, park and it's like a foot deep or something. It's so John was just I know it's kind of off topic. John was just talking to me about <clears throat> sewer on F, the midpoint of F or so where the new houses are at south the park. Originally it was thought that there wasn't sewer that connected from F to park directly south but he was looking at some old maps which was laying on the table over there and uh from that it looks like there was something they, well he doesn't know if that was a wish list or if they actually built it but but um we were talking to the county water department today and water lines do run through there already so it would make sense that sewer does run there too so there could be sewer there they're going to look into it Right. And, uh, all all right, we'll give we'll give you all a chance here in a second. Okay. All right. So yeah, we have rep we have representatives from uh, some of the folks down on F Street here tonight. Um, there, there is a sewer line right behind my property. That that is 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 an asset. 
between my property and the next property. And it goes along the line and down the fence to each. Because uh, the guy that owned those two pieces of property prior to us, he had, he had a snake with a camera. <clears throat> yeah, I know that, I know that there's a, there's main two remains that run from F, the, about the midpoint. About halfway of, between. Yeah, the midpoint of F directly yeah. west past some of those new hopes. There's a so he was going to there. connect to that. Good night, guys. You guys have a great night. Thanks for the information. So, yeah, they're actually going to build a house in Connecticut to the back of my property. John and uh, Evergreen Rural Water, um, they, they uh, whenever they get a chance, they camera unknown areas. And so John is, is, is enhancing our map of the sewer system on a regular basis as they find new lines. So he's snaky. He went along this way, went south, and then went west along the fence line is currently up. I, How do you advance getting an attorney? Is it a certain amount of complaints where it gets to that point? Well, this, the city would be able to utilize its own its own attorney to help us with that, um, to help draft, draft those legal documents. Where and the attorney you? isn't the attorney isn't for the civil issues of it. It's the attorney is for the city and taking incorporating it into the city. Yeah, taking it back. Right, right. So it would involve it would involve probably a, a city paid for a, a survey of that area so we'd get the lay of the land. They would need to, um, part of that would be, you know, how wide is it going to be? Is it gonna be a 30 foot right of way? Is it gonna be a 40 foot right of way? Um, you know, those are those are things to be discuss, discussed. I believe it's a 30 foot now. It probably is similar to E Street. Cause it's 15 feet um, from the center. You know, and then what does that look like, you know, with, Fences that are there now and everything. Um, you know, would we grandfather those in temporarily? Um, but a person would never be able to rebuild them. You know, lo lots of unknowns at this point. Um, but you know, that's what happens when a road when a road exists there, right? Um, but a lot of benefits would come from it too. Um, so, my I'm in a, I'm in a position where like if there was something passed that was like all roads come back or whatever, my driveway. In G Street, my I have two parcels mm -hmm. on either side of the road. It cuts mm -hmm. right through the middle. So, I, yeah, it's kind well, of a my, sticky situation. My, you guys, I move the butt up. Me? No, the the other guy, the boom up. Oh, I oh, think he's. That <clears throat> The Haven Hall and he's gone. Of, I fenced my property because I was seeing a hole. He, it was like a mess again. So he tried to turn down and walk away. Recently, he was been hauling lots of stuff out of there. Yeah. So I don't know if that's you guys pushing him or. He. He doesn't like it when we talk to him, but he, he is now registered in, in Longview. The last time I talked with him, he was literally was pulling up on the trailer to haul it out. It was one of the last things that were. Two weeks ago. That yeah, and that's when he pulled into my driveway, backed up. He was like, and it was like yeah, pulling the tires out. <laughs> he, he was yeah. early in the morning. He was hauling several trips out of there. Yeah, yeah, I lived right there, and he's out there at all hours of the night. Yeah, that's when I got to work. Is that the end of part? <laughs> that part <laughs> comes yeah. down behind you. So he's gone was there, I and then it, yeah, Mr. Garrett came to he is registered. All I can say is he is registered uh, down in uh, Mike, you were saying something about taking people's property. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Like uh, to re that. reacquiring um, right. roadways and like, you know. This would be a, a mutual agreement. Yeah. You know, <laughs> at, at some point, I mean, yeah. I mean, if we, if we, if we, uh, uh, you know, if we uh, approach the the folks there that live there with whatever legal agreement that says yes, they're interested in doing that. I suppose if we got to a point where nine out of ten people agree, I guess it would be on the on the council's mm -hmm. you know decision making whether or not we're going to say all right, 
number 10, we're sorry, or mm -hmm. you're outvoted. Um, I don't know what that procedure would look like, but um, we would definitely find out. Mm -hmm. I want a motion that we proceed with looking into allocating funds to proceed. With. We have a motion by Mr. Ferguson to um, <clears throat> direct staff to start looking into reacquiring F Street. Is there a second? I second. Yeah. Second of Mr. Hall. Mr. Mr. Hall. Discussion. Anyone, anyone else? Is uh, there who would like to talk? I have been with the 24 yeah. and the black sheep of the family. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was when I moved out there and it looked like a mess camp because this is Mr. Barry on this call. Um, he never really bothered me. It was just he was very loud and there was potential drug activity. We did find a pipe over there one time. And, you know, so I guess I guess I didn't look at it. But the thing is that where the Which? treatment ends, my property line ends. Past that, so that's why it's fenced. And I spent ten thousand five hundred dollars of my own money mm. asphalting that part of the road. Mm. So that's the only thing I would have to negotiate would be some funding to come back for what I spent on the road. But the reason I do that is because the certain lovely neighbor who mm. fights with everybody was driving up and down, spinning gravel on my vehicles, purposely tearing up my road because she was mad about the fence. Which I've been to court twice. Over the last few years, about that, I've had restraining orders. These lovely police officers. It's been a pretty big issue. So, um, you know, I'm okay with working with you guys to do that if that's what's best for everybody. But the reason I got it fixed is because there's still homeless people that are just down that trail that just wander up on the property. Um, I'm very down in these. The concealed handgun things are okay, but you know, it's just not very mm -hmm. feeling safe when you're a single mom who she's fourth grade now, but we've been out here for a few years, so that was the whole reason. Because I found like a plastic container on the back of my property with food and water, but someone was basically living on the back. I would certainly hope that they would negotiate with you personally, Joe, because I've spent thousands of dollars. Putting up cedar fencing, yeah, hundreds of dollars for Sherwood Paint to paint it. Not only does it add considerable value to my property, but it blocks the garbage across the street. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I spend more money to get drive my driveway just to be mean. But are you guys paying more money? Okay. Yeah. So if they want to widen the property, hopefully they would negotiate a lease me along with my family. Sure. I think everyone would be uh, approached individually. There'd be, you know, my understanding is at this point, you know, there'd be an agreement with each each property owner, um, and everyone would have to have an opportunity to voice voice their. Well, we're all open to that. I just want yeah. to know every single neighbor is open to this, including yeah. Jennifer, who lives behind this lane here. Okay. Um, she's texting. She's at a yoga meeting. I will she said the that, petition if necessary. Yeah, that her son couldn't even get down the road because they were so mad about the other neighbor who was joining you online, putting up a fence on her rightfully owned property. They can't park over there. They can't park on Mr. Parsons' mm -hmm. property. They asking her today where the fence is being built. They they need to tear down their little fence, their little chicken horn fence, and park on their property. It's the only place left. Yeah, they're becoming they're very parking violent. on the narrowest part of F Street, the narrowest area. Sure. And all their vehicles, six to eight. So I think there's only two people on this rental loan mortgage. All the others are transient people that live with her. And so the the road. Road. there's a lot of transportation people. Yeah, yeah, right. Sales agreement. Sales agreement. Sales agreement. Right now. <laughs> See, it's a lot They've of got money. people living in trailers and everything else on their property. They've got too many people parking up on the road. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, the the um, person that just spoke online, could you identify yourself, please? Uh, Don Deanna Michaela, down at the end of F Street on 1105. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I think it'd be beneficial for the residents and just beneficial beneficial to the city as a whole um, to to be able to um, maintain and um, enforce you know, have a have a a through street again, um, be able to have our public works um, maintain the street regularly. You know, it's not an issue to getting gravel out there and using the grader and everything. Um, yeah, no, so. I said there might not be enough money to actually concrete and pave the road like the rest of the city. 
but well, there's a lot of there's a lot of roads that are are yeah, not yeah, paved in yeah. the city still. Well, right you now. said at least they would we wouldn't have a handout to pay for the gravel. You know, said the city of Detroit yeah. would do it. Yeah. keep all the potholes still and the gravel in there. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Yep. I'm the one that brought up. Oh, she's gone. So the new drone here. I went to the counter and I said it's just an idea. But how about seeing if Joe has maybe a half an hour, an hour to come down here and actually have a feedback session with the perpetrator and all of the victims. And there's multiple on the street. And just have a professional business meeting where there's no profanity, there's no yelling, there's no texting, there's no phone calls, there's no leaving notes. You know, have a feedback session where everybody's involved. I mean, I got involved with, with the dog biting me and then there was trash thrown everywhere. I think we've got that issue now. Now it's just the F Street and where all the cars are parking. Now they bought a new trampoline recently. Well, it doesn't have to go there. It can go on the other side of her property. There's room there. They could bulldoze that chicken fence and put gravel in there and get all the cars right there, you know? And rather than leave notes and talk Is about that it, on the, 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 the easement? Is there the trampoline like, like on the easement? I mean, the trampoline's like on the easement? No, that's on their own property. Yes, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's not really. There is no right of way, that's the problem. It would have to be moved. Yeah, they're the There's only residents of the property lines. Uh, out of 10 residents or 13, whatever, they're the only ones on that street that park all the vehicles. The only one. And that's the narrowest part of the road where all, all these cars are. So I thought if we get her to come yeah. here and have a calm meeting about all of the issues and you know, what could be done. <laughs> That yeah, isn't going to happen. That's not going to happen. He's, he's not visible. How are you going to talk to somebody? So, so having some resolve mm -hmm. and some defined borders as to where the road is, where easements are, or an egress, you know, that 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 has value to oh, you yeah. guys, right? Right. So, I mean, yeah. even if the city wasn't able to, like, hey, here, we're going to shell you out money for your fence that you built, you know, I mean, you, you had to do that. Or here, here's money for asphalt. I mean, it it has some value that these things kind of be tidied up and tightened up and lines drawn. Well, as it is right now, we can't do anything about them blocking the roads. So we're just kind of blocked into our own homes at this point. It's becoming an issue. The sheriff can't do anything about it. And this kind and of it would just be easier for all of us down here at the end if it was incorporated. Um, yeah, that's Gandhi, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. You know, if someone parks on your property, can you have them towed? Yeah. So the issue Legally. is, yeah. With this, with the easement going through there, it's going to take a judge to make the determination. The rules mm -hmm. that that um, the people well, using those easements, the easement has to abide by. And if you look at I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. Uh -huh. I'm making a legal decision. But when I look at the, the easement paperwork that the mayor has sent me, you can see where each of those property owners have property that now comes together in the middle of this easement. And they have a long and driveway that they are at they with very well be on their section of the property. And that's why that all needs to be settled in court. In other words, nobody else could tow their cars from the easement, which could potentially be on their portion of the easement. Because there is no defined easement in any of the recorded documents. Like I just went through that with my neighbor. It's okay. there, there's an alley that was an easement. But for for yeah. in, for instance, on important. on the the property on Dondi's property, it is not an easement to F Street. That is her property. That is her driveway. Yeah. And so she has to use the neighbor's driveway to get through. There isn't an easement that goes down between, it's like a flag lot is the way that it is. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm just gonna, you know names and I don't know names. Oh, okay. So you're talking so, to the spur that goes off to the west, where you go down, there's two houses, one on the north side of the little spur, one on the south of the spur. Yes, okay. so each one of those that isn't an easement easement that can that goes down to those houses. That is their property line down the center. So their driveway, it's actually their drive, there's two driveways that go down that and to their houses. Okay. 
so it's yeah, not, me and Jennifer's property lines make up our driveway. Okay, yeah, so that's not an easement at all through there. That is their their driveways, their property lines. Well, Dolly had a good sense of today because they kept parking there. And that's basically, I think, what they're asking is if the vehicles are parked on Mike's land or on Donnie's land, can they be towed? Yeah, I, I see where the I see where there's a there's a confusion on on F Street where that's an easement, but if if somebody was to park in my driveway and block me from getting home, if you tow a vehicle that's you're saying that's on your property, you're probably not going to get in trouble criminally. But there is the possibility that they take you to court and prove or convince the judge that no, 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 they shouldn't have been able to tow that. That was partially on my property or whatever. And you could potentially have some civil fine, i.e., you get stuck with the tow bill or you get stuck with the tow bill and guess what? It hurt my feelings. Therefore, I'm going to get some additional money out of it. It just, it's one of those things I, I can't give legal advice, but yeah, yeah. I would definitely speak with an attorney before doing something like that just knowing. I spoke with um I, sorry I spoke with my attorney about this and he told me to wait on towing any vehicles off of my property after I got my survey lines and he is going to send a letter out to the offenders and once they get that letter they are responsible for the tow bill and everything once they park on my property again Perfect. So you could do it that way. It's great for taking the initiative on that. Yeah. And the tow company's owner said no tow company will come out and tow a vehicle just under the cut. It has to be done in advance and has to be a contract written up where I think they call it absconding. I couldn't say that's something. Yeah, when they when they're retrieving a vehicle that's on somebody else's property and we take it to a lot, he said we're at liable, we could be sued. So it has to be all done in advance so that they're legally protected against liability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it sounds like everyone, there's there's no one here saying that they're not in, in agreement with this. Um, we had a first and a second um, on, uh, on directing the city staff to start working on this um, discussion. The only discussion or question I might have for you is, do I vote on it because I'm directly involved? Involved. Well, how about this? I'll we, be a tiebreaker if I need. To. How about this? <laughs> we all have sewer bills. Well, I guess not all of okay. you. We all have sewer bills, and we all vote on that. Mm -hmm. We all drive on that road, or could drive on that road. So why can't we all vote on that? Okay. Perfect. I just wanted to make that's, it that's out there. The logic behind that. Mm -hmm. so. Do you already have a designated city attorney? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Then yeah. maybe you can ask him if he can legally do it for a civil attorney. Because I think we could do a class action suit where everybody pays a little bit to the attorney so so many people involved without the car parking. I can and ask her, but yeah. um that's, that is certainly not her specialty. Her specialty is certainly municipal. Um, but she <clears throat> is always full of references. So. I'd like that. But, okay. um, all right, more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll get started on it and we'll have reports for you. And I'm sure anything, uh, I'm sure you'll all keep the, the first to know too. So, um, moving on to item number three, uh, council to consider the real estate purchase and sale agreement. Um, this was not on the agenda um, until now um, because I didn't know when it was going to be ready. It became ready yesterday and I picked it up today. So, um, to summarize, this uh, piece of property is located on um, between the city shop and the post office um, right on highway 506 it's vacant it's a very small piece of property it's currently owned by longtime residents um, um, kathy crawford and 
Carol Broom, and they're actually they have, they have a LLC that represents their entire family for a variety of pro properties that they own. They 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 own. Um, they would like. They're moving. They're moving out of town. Um, they're getting up there in age, and they're and they're moving out. Um, they would like the city to take possession of this property. Um, they're willing to sell it at the ta the tax assessed value of twenty seven thousand uh, dollars, which is far below the market value of a piece of property. If you, um, you remember, the city bought a piece of property for three times that much money uh, just last year um, at the for the appraised value. Um, so they're really um, doing what they can to, to get it to the city. Um, within this agreement, there are a couple of requests that they have. One, that the city maintains it as a park. Um, two, um, if you know the if you know those uh, those ladies, um, they're active um, with the Lions Club and they've been part of the May Day committee. Um, their request is that um, those clubs can use the property for free um, into the future. Um, they would still have to come in and apply for a parks permit as usual, um, but because of the agreement, we would waive uh, that twenty-five dollar fee or whatever. Um, this city has a similar agreement with Worden Park. Um, when the city um, purchased the Worden Park property extension from the Assembly of God, um, within that agreement, it lets the Assembly of God utilize Worden Park um, for free for a number of years as well. Um, that was part of the, the deal for them to sell that part property to us for only $6,000, I think is what it was. It was, it was. it was very little money. Um, and so... That is the um, the extent of the the asks that they have, just that it, re it remains um, park and open for these uh, organizations to use. If you're familiar with that property, um, usually during those um, during those festivals, um, they set up some pop up shelters down there, and they had vendors and stuff out there in the grass. Um, so it would be city it would be city maintained at that point. Um, the park the park board. Um, well, if you look that picture up on the wall up there, that colored picture, that's the 2003 Vision Vader. Um, back way back at the beginning of the 2000s, there was a vision for downtown Vader. They got a grant to create this whole thing. Um, right in that picture, it has this piece of property, and there's a small pocket park right there in that picture from 20 years ago. A little um, pink area. Yep. Yep. Um, I think there's a little pond there or something, but. Um, so it's just it's going back. You know, this this was envisioned to be part of the city of Vader for for decades now. Um, they want to just be um, making that happen. So um, as far as where the funds would come from, the city, had, if you remember, the city had ARPA ARPA funds. Um, the city had one hundred eighty thousand dollars worth of ARPA money. We used ten thousand or so to help with the the tractor purchase. Um, we used around a little over a hundred. Um, with the other property purchase. And so we still have ample funds available to um, add another piece of park property to the city. Why do we need another park? We've already Why got do two. we need another park? We've already oh, got two. Man, everyone loves parks. Not for that price, we don't. That's a lot of money for that little piece of crappy uh, lawn. Well, uh, I suppose it depends on- We on don't the need another property. I suppose it depends on on perspective. I mean, for the for the market value of the property, it is an extremely good price. Um, they could probably easily sell that for um, three times as much. Um, we don't need another park. We've already got one. We've already got the other one. It's just too much property. We we got the other one by the railroad now. Why are we buying all this property? We're, we're not supposed to be buying property. Well, it's just well, it's too a good much. time to buy property. I, just I guess property. it kind of keeps it from well, like turning into like a, a you know, Nike outlet or a McDonald's or something. Nike outlet? Is that the first thing no, that's your mind? I don't know. I was just throwing something <laughs> corporate so out there. Bath and I mean, Beyond. The middle of house house. I don't know. The Lions, the Lions has historically always set up there, you know, for various events and, you know, May Day and different stuff. And, it would uh, allow you know these these sorry, folks Michael. have let let the lions utilize mm -hmm. the property for free. It's a isn't small it adjacent place. to the shop? Yeah. Yes, it is, Bob. D directly west. 
yeah, right along the sidewalk. Um, you know, you there there you could envision a time when the downtown area is built out, mm -hmm. um, and that vacant land that we utilize now for various um, activities is gone. Um, this would allow, at least a, to a small degree, um, some vacant space um, in the core of the city there um, for different activities, if the city were to, were to have it. Isn't there a safe on the bank still underground? The second person that's mentioned a safe uh, from the old bank that used that to be on that property. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and then they need to pay for it. They just filled it in with a bunch of junk and they closed the lid and put dirt over it. And so it's nothing really in the Jimmy Hoffman. I make a motion that we approve the purchase and sales agreement. I second that. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the purchase and sale agreement. Uh, we have a second by Mr. Ferguson. Uh, further discussion. Um, you know, I, I, I envision the city not just keep, not necessarily just keeping it open grass, um, turning it into a, an area with maybe seating areas all the way around, um, having some brick walkway through it, having an area where people could sit and, um, and hang out, maybe some lights. Some vendors, Saturday market. There. Well, you know, I was thinking we've had discussions from folks that own property in town about food food trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that area 506 is really wide along the sidewalk. It would be perfect to have food trucks pull up there right along the sidewalk and then have a spot right there um, mm -hmm. where people can sit and, you know, enjoy their lunch or whatever. That's really like the competition. That's what the town was like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, and it's hard to, it, you know, it's hard to you think Bader's been, you know, and it's been empty down there for so long, but things are changing. You know, we've got three active subdivision applications here in town right now. Um, there, there's a good possibility 40 brand new homes could be built just this, just this year alone in town. Um, Did you say 4D? 40, 40 nice. new homes uh, between those three subdivisions. Um, that's a lot more people looking for things to do. Um, I'm not. There's a there's a business that's going to be starting downtown, um, a, a new business. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna... What is it? Is it I don't know. <laughs> is still part of town? I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, one of the old the old home, the old original home that was for sale down there, the green one. Um, that Samantha lived in. Oh, it's been bought by a company that specializes in bed and breakfasts. They're going to totally renovate that property back to its original glory, and they're going to have a bed and breakfast downtown. Uh, they're successful in other cities already doing this, so they have a proven track record. Um, and they, they're interested in doing, pro perhaps doing other projects downtown as well. And so, and so there are things happening, there are things coming. Um, and having um, some city accessible property there um, could be beneficial. I think it's good for. And heck, in the at Christmas time, we at Christmas time we could put a we could put a tree there. Once a year at Christmas, we put the bell in that home right there, and you can see some new lights all kinds of things. Yeah. So. So it, it has been. Oh, it's the building. Right now it's in the jail. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, this purchase and sale agreement, um, it's not the final contract. What this will allow the city to do, it, it's, uh, it gives us a period of time to get a survey done. It gives us a period of time to do the environmental assessment where they come out, test the soil, make sure that the city is not taking on liability for a toxic waste dump or something like that. Um, and then assuming all of those things come back clean and no issues, then the city has the option to purchase and then the city and then that would come back to council at that time. That's it. Motion, second. Further discussion? No. All those in favor of uh, approving the purchase and sale agreement, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Me. Motion carries. All right, that concludes the
city business. Moving on to public comment. Any members of the public have anything to comment on? Any members online? Yes, I uh, have a comment about uh, Vader water system yeah, by uh, council and staff hasn't uh, approached it. Um, we don't want to lose it as part of our infrastructure, the whole worth of town. So thanks. Yeah, thanks, Bob, for, for reminding, uh, reminding us about that. Um, a reminder to council, uh, we do have until the end of this year to initiate the process of uh, receivership if we're interested in getting our water system back. Um, I'm doing a little bit of research right now, but um, it's going to need to come to council um, for decisions sooner than later. That should be made a high priority, yes. Will that be more or less expensive for the residents with the change? Well, ideally it would be the same or less. Um, obviously there'd have to be um, documents taken, gotten from Lewis County so that we could do a cost analysis, understand um, what it costs, is costing them to run the system and uh, seeing if it's worthwhile for us to do it. So it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a, it's a one-year process with a lot of paperwork um, and a, a committee needs to get put together um, before it, the receivership would have to take place. We'd have to have the employees in place and the training in place so that there could be a seamless transfer. It will be a lot to do, a lot. Well, no project is free of overnight thing. Very expensive. Well, as they say, if it's <clears throat> worth doing, it's probably not easy. Yeah. So. Do you remember the discussion you and I had maybe a couple of years ago now? We were both in IGA and um, I said, wow, look at all the new homes being built in our town. You know, and, and you said, yeah, there's a lot of old time residents who are not happy about that. They liked it rural, not all these people. And you brought up to them, but don't you realize that with a higher, more population, it's going to help defray the cost involved for the residents. So a year later, I bring that up to the office staff and they go, no, it's never going to go down. It's always going to go up. And I go, hmm. I think I'll have a talk with Joe. That sounds opinion-based. <laughs> well, like an opinion-based statement. Here's something. Here's not yours, but not yours, but the quote. The quote. <laughs> Point your finger at me about utility rates. Well, here's something with here's something with sewer. Think about sewer. We have one employee that runs the sewer plant. John helps out sometimes too. Um, the pumps are always running. You know, there's, when, if, if you can add a hundred homes and it doesn't cost us any more to run the sewer plant, right? It's just, the thing is just on, right? It's, it doesn't really change the amount of chemicals we use. It doesn't mean we have to hire another employee, but you have a hundred more homes paying a hundred dollars a month, whatever your sewer bill is, into it. Makes sense to me. They're helping to the cost. Exactly. You know, your hundred more, hundred more homes paying into the same system. The costs don't go up with a hundred more homes putting their waste down the down the drain. The rates would have to go down, or at the very least, not go up with inflation. Right. I mean, things do go up. Our chemical costs go up. Our power increases, just like everything else. People have to pay for it, but with more homes. It, like I said, it defrays those costs, keeps rates from going up, or maybe we could even go down. Every budget season in, in October, November, we reevaluate the sewer rates. Um, and um, By dividing it out amongst. Exactly. We figure out exactly what we think it's going to cost, right down to the dollar, and we divide it out by the number of people paying, because we know how many people pay. We know how many people don't pay, unfortunately, <laughs> too. Um, and... Um, and we figure out our sewer rates. And so this year we did raise our sewer rates a little bit, but it was four dollars a month. Is there something like that. Or is there, they don't have to pay because of their situation or something? So there are people that choose not to pay, and they are in collections. Wow. Um, okay. Well, that was two years ago, and 
now we have from 600 population to 850. So approximately 850. Where did that, where did that come from? I think we're still closer to 700. Yeah. Okay, well, 100 more. <clears throat> so that was two years ago. So how many more people have to move in to get the cost lowered? I, well, instead of it going up $10, or what were we planning on it going up? Uh, it was. Chris, remember when we, we raised the rates this, this year? It was six, $4 a month, something like that? It was $4. Two years ago, we were planning on it going up almost $30 to $40 a month. Yeah, if you had uh, been, yep, Mike's bringing up when we were, so as, as you know, the new wastewater plant is online and operating now. It was a $6 million project. Um, for, for a decade now, folks that sat up here were worried that the city would have $6 million in loans to pay back and your sewer rates would double. And that's what we were looking at for a long time. And through a lot of wonderful things that had happened, we got the whole thing paid for with grants, basically. And so there are no additional loans related to the construction. So you're saying like instead of so, increasing it, it's, it's frozen. Because well, it's not frozen because every year we have to figure it out. Like the new plant costs us more money with the chemicals and things like that. So this year, um, well, I guess it was last year, the end of last year, we had to refigure out what those payments are going to be because of the new costs that were there. So with those extra, you said 100 homes, whatever it was, we divided that new cost by the bigger number, the 100 homes or, or 700, whatever it was, and that got us our bill. If those seven, if those extra hundred homes weren't there, it would have been divided by six hundred homes, and the bill would have been bigger. Okay, so, so it has saved these people moving in have saved you money on your sewer bill. Thanks, Jackie. We're moving in. Uh, by February. If we own the water system, though. We could shut the water off at at this point we can't lewis county won't let us shut the water off is that true that is correct bob yeah one of the reasons one of the problems with not having the water system is you know there is no valve to shut off someone's sewer bill when they don't pay their sewer so the city can't go shut off their sewer you just you just can't do it normally your water and sewer utility are together you don't pay your bill, you shut off the water, and then they come and pay their bill. Um, and so that's one of the things, one of the reasons why some people haven't paid. This isn't a lot of people, but some. Um, they just haven't paid their sewer bill. They have thousands of dollars of back sewer bill. Um, because in county won't, you know, county runs the water system, they won't shut the water off for us because they're two separate systems. And so one of the reasons to get the water system back is that we could enforce um, our sewer billings. Um, more regularly um, or obviously these people that don't pay these bills go to collections eventually they get liens on their houses when the house sells the city gets paid it's back uh, what it's due but um, that's a that's a long time to wait sometimes when i said we were very nice staff they keep oh there's a lot of money for me i don't use you know what would they saw off your water and i said well if my water bill is 60 then why is my sewer bill 80 going off that and she said, well, you're true. that's true. You are one of the most frugal people in that town. Yeah? I use my bath water to wash my car. I use my bath water to water my plant. Nobody goes to that stream. My son calls me the frugal one. Okay? He teases me. But I am very frugal. So if the water is 60, then why are we paying 80? And she said, you're basing it off that. Okay? <clears throat> yeah. Or it's based, and it's based off the usage. It's based off the usage and there is a minimum payment amount. But I think the moral of the story is tonight, Joe told you the truth. The more people you save money. That's right to the horse's mouth. That's right. That's what I'm going to go back to Brookwood. Any other public comment? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned at 7.32 p.m. Unless elected officials have anything to say. No, we did that already. Goodbye. 7.32 p.m. Meeting adjourned.